On to part two, and I can't help but feel the show is going a bit too fast. Deaths land more heavily if you get to spend some time with the character before they get killed. Even more so if you start to develop feelings for them, be those feelings love or hate. I may be a man, but I still do need some foreplay, House of the Dragon. We cut to the dragon pit where the royal children are being taught to be dragon riders. The queen's kids and the princess's kids don't get along. And I don't like any of these characters. Between them, the royal family seems to have not raised a single child fit to rule the kingdom. Maybe the princess's kids are slightly better. They get less on-screen time, so I really can't tell you. The queen confronts the king about the princess's kids being bastards, and the king won't listen again. He pretends not to know, despite the fact it couldn't be more obvious. They then do something kind of clever. Alicent has hope that the truth will come to light about the princess and her infidelity, and her eldest son will be made heir instead of the princess. She says, I believe honesty and decency will prevail. We have to hew to that. And then it cuts to a scene of her walking in to her eldest son's bedroom, and the person that she wants to inherit the throne is jerking out of a window. In fact, maybe that could be a new idea for Sir Lainor to get the princess pregnant without having to hand in his gay card. Sir Lainor, have you tried whacking it out of a window and trying to time it so that when you finish, the princess happens to be walking underneath? No? Have you tried a George Michael mask and a bucket of cologne? Coming on a pillow and starting a pillow fight? Getting Sir Harwin to push your back. Maybe the princess could do a Marjorie Terrell and offer to bring a fruity guy along. Though that would probably be kind of weird for a Targaryen, I suppose. In order to be normal the way George has written the Targaryens, the other guy would have to be her dad. And we have more problems. Because I don't like Alicent's eldest son already, and I've only seen him for about two minutes. Uh, never mind. I'll, I'll probably only have to wait one episode and ten more years will pass and he'll probably be a new actor. Matt Smith will look the same though. Uh, how has Alicent done such a bad job raising her first son knowing the fate of the kingdom rests on it? Frankly, maybe the princess is best as heir instead of this guy. These are the equations sensible people would have been doing. People would have been thinking, hmm, you know, yeah, maybe it'd be for the best if this guy maybe fell from a tower window before he became king. With just a little foresight, Vladimir Putin could have been avoided. How would Alicent not see that her son is completely unsuitable? He's a petty bully, a tyrant in the making. The show is expecting me to believe that the Queen has just walked in on her son, jerking out of a window, and still thinks, yep, this, this is the man to lead the kingdom forward. The kids don't get along at all, and this time they're training. Bonus points that they're using wooden training swords. Even so, they maybe should have had some head and eye protection. But it's still better than the training scene in Rings of Power. Well done. They have some armour on. Check. Wooden swords. Check. Not fighting in a public square. Check. No Galadriel. Maybe I should have given this episode a high rating just for that last one. As the kids fight, Sir Harwin is very defensive towards his illegitimate children. Sir Kristen notices and decides to try his hand. Saying to Sir Harwin, most men would only have that kind of devotion to a cousin, a brother, or a son. And Harwin loses it, rushing Kristen and punching him repeatedly in the face. He's given Kristen exactly what he wanted. He's all but confirmed that he is the father of the princess's children, like it was ever in any doubt. This is not like Game of Thrones with the Lannister children ending up blonde. These children are the wrong ethnicity. Like anyone would need this as confirmation. Oh no, that's let the cat out of the bag. Harwin's father, the Hand, calls for him. Harwin has blown it. The infidelity could get him, the princess and the kids executed. There's a council meeting and the princess and the queen constantly argue. The princess is very worried about the situation and offers a truce and a wedding of her eldest son to the queen's daughter, which frankly does not sound like a bad deal for the queen. She should maybe take it. It could avoid war and her son is an enormous douche. I don't like what they've done with Alicent. She says basically what will happen over her dead body. Her duty to the realm has been replaced by spite.
If the realm really will revolt at the idea of a female ruler, the king's best course of action will be to disinherit his daughter and name either one of her sons or one of his as heir and try to explain to her why later. Sadly, the king is a jelly, so it's probably going to end up in war. Lord Strong tries to resign and get his son out before people start getting executed, and the king refuses him. So they end up making a deal. Lord Strong stays on his hand, and his son leaves and goes to Harrenhal. The queen is unhappy with this, as she wants Lord Strong replaced his hand by her own father, and she tells Laris about it. So Laris gets to work, he gets some prisoners, murderers and such, as you do, cuts their tongues out and sends them to Harrenhal to kill his own father. They start a fire, which supposedly kills his brother and father. I can't tell you if it actually did. It happens off camera again. This has started to become a theme. I'm not sure if the show is bold or insane. We have the Rings of Power and She-Hulk, where almost nothing happens. And then we have this show, where if anything, too much happens too fast and nearly all of it happens off camera. So Lord Strong is apparently dead and it's silly because Laris killing his father is an obvious betrayal. The Queen didn't even ask him to do it so Laris has shown himself to be violent, ruthless, a betrayer. He's therefore untrustworthy as an ally and the most sensible thing would be for the Queen to have him killed or arrested. Meanwhile, the princess leaves and takes a whole family to Dragonstone so they can't all be executed, and Daemon is in Pentos with his family. The nobles of Pentos want to pay them to stay because Daemon has dragons, and Pentos fear war with the Triarchy. His wife Lena is pregnant again, and we get another lengthy scene of labour. Rarely, two scenes of giving birth in one episode. This is altogether too much female screaming for me, House of the Dragon. Who was the target audience for this? Jeffrey Dahmer. The baby gets stuck and the medic says it'll have to be cut out, killing the mother if the baby is to survive. So Lena makes the very logical choice of going to a dragon and making it incinerate her and the baby. It would have had more weight if we'd gotten to know her better and this whole episode went a bit silly.